The Son of the Soap Seller. Once upon a time, there lived a young man named Ahmed, in the beautiful city of Meshed. Meshed's beautiful mosque with the golden dome was the glory of the kingdom of Persia. Trade in the city was at its peak. People were happy, but not Ahmed, as his father's soap business was dry and breathing out. Oh, brothers! By my pure soap, there is none better in the city, as everyone knows. But the people in Persia did not use much soap on themselves or their clothes, as sand was used for everything, even cleaning cooking pots and pans. And so, there were many days when Ahmed and his father did not sell enough to buy sufficient bread for themselves. Days passed, and soon Ahmed realized that it was time he stepped out of his father's soap business and tried something else. Father, our soaps do not sell, and hence I have decided to go to the market and look for more opportunities. At the market, Ahmed would work hard for traders, peddlers, and shopkeepers, and in return get a handful of rice or bread or a few dried fruits. Which he would bring back home and eat with his father. Now it so happened one day that Ahmed, as usual, was passing through a jungle to reach the market. And as the sun was very hot, he thought of stopping by the lake to drink some water. There, some of the women were filling their water jugs while the others washed clothes. Just then, Ahmed saw a procession led by a royal minister. The procession stopped just opposite to Ahmed, and from the palanquin there alighted a beautiful lady. She was Princess Roxana. I am thirsty. Can I have some water to drink? A lady walked up to her with a water jug, and as she was about to give it to the princess, suddenly from the bushes sprang a lion roaring furiously. Ah! Ah! As people ran, the lion turned towards the princess. It sprang upon her and bore her to the ground. Ah! Help me! Seeing the princess in danger, Ahmed immediately picked a fire torch lying nearby and sprang towards the lion. Ahmed swung the torch with all his force, and the lion immediately ran away. Ahmed smiled and turned towards Princess Roxana, who was shaking with fear. He immediately gave her water to drink. Thank you, oh brave man! You saved my life. <laughs> Princess Roxana, we need to leave immediately. Princess Roxana nodded and, smiling at Ahmed, got inside her palanquin. Ah, <sighs> she is so beautiful. The next day, when Ahmed was in the market, an old peddler walked up to him. Son, you work very hard. Do you even make enough for yourself? Ah,、uh, no, sir, I don't. But at least my father and I get some food to it. Why don't you go to the capital city? Trade is much better there, and someone like you could earn handsomely. Ahmed thought about it for a while and then said, "Well, then that is what I will do. Tomorrow, my father and I will set out for the capital city." The peddler wished him luck and left. And so the next day, Ahmed and his father began their journey. They would travel during the night and rest during the day to avoid the scorching heat of the sun. They went on sometimes climbing up winding paths among the mountains, at other times traversing the desert footsore. One day, when Ahmed's father was sleeping under a tree, Ahmed heard the sound of someone groaning. Intrigued, he left his sleeping father behind and walked towards the direction of the sound. Soon, he found a poor dervish lying on the sand. He had a scarf thrown over his shoulders. By his side lay a big stick studded with an eagle head shaped marble. For the sake of the angels, give me a drink of water. Ahmed immediately gave him his pitcher, 
though the water was somewhat salty. The dervish gulped all of the water down in an instant. <coughs> Thank you so much, young lad. I am the old man of the desert, and I am grateful to you for your help. Here, take this tiny crystal cup. Each morning when you rise, place a drop of pure water in the cup and look intently therein. And should any danger threaten you or those near and dear to you, it will clearly foretell you everything. <sighs> At that moment, a cold breeze blew turning the old man of the desert's body into hundreds of rose petals that flew away with the wind. Ahmed was spellbound. Whoa! He returned to his father and told him everything. From the next morning, Ahmed did as the dervish had directed him, but saw nothing for days. Time passed, and now Ahmed and his father were only three days away from the capital city when suddenly a lion attacked them. It was the same lion with the scar in its face. It sprang towards Ahmed. Help! Help! Somebody save my boy! Suddenly a beautiful young woman appeared, carrying a fire torch. It was Princess Roxana. <laughs> she swung the fire torch near the lion, and it immediately fled from there. Princess, you? <sighs> well, that makes us even. Um, <laughs> thank you, but what is the princess doing here? Princess Roxana pointed towards the royal caravan. My father, the king, and I are returning from a pilgrimage when I happen to hear someone screaming. Where are you traveling to? To the capital city. Well, we are going to the capital, too. You can come with us. Thank you so much. And so Ahmed and his father joined the royal caravan and soon reached the capital city. Seeing the condition of Ahmed's father, the princess advised him to stay in the royal guest chambers for a week before finding work in the new city. The king, too, insisted. Yes, stay in the guest chambers till you find a job. Ahmed agreed happily as he had enough time to find himself a good job. But after his narrow escape from the lion, he took pains every morning to place a drop of water in the crystal cup and look therein. Nothing appeared until, on the seventh day, he saw in the water a vision of the king asleep and standing by him a figure with an uplifted dagger about to strike. He at once hurried to the king. My king, there is a great danger upon you. Someone is trying to kill you. You must be wary. <laughs> Ahmed, my guards are well trained and reliable. Do not worry. As you say, your majesty. Saying this, Ahmed left the courtroom, but kept thinking as to who might be wanting to kill the king. A little away from the capital, the lion turned into an evil-looking man. He was the old man of the mountains, and unlike the old man of the desert, was a very evil man. He wanted to kill the king and the princess and seize the capital city. He also wanted to kill Ahmed, for he had saved Princess Roxana. Tonight will be your last night, King. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ahmed was determined to keep a watch. Darkness came and the palace was silent. The guards slept, but not Ahmed. He kept waiting, when suddenly he perceived a dark shadow creeping into that part of the palace where the king slept. The figure noiselessly made its way to the very threshold of the king's room when Ahmed sprang upon it and at the same time screamed his lungs out. Attack! Attack! The king is being attacked! At this, the king woke up and so did the guards and the soldiers. They immediately came running along with Princess Roxana. 
But just then, the old man of the mountain changed himself into a lion. You have troubled me enough, boy. I will take care of the king later. But first, let me take care of you. The lion sprang towards Ahmed when suddenly the crystal cup fell from his pocket. And from it came out a huge desert eagle. Oh, oh no! The old man of the desert! No! At once, the lion's body turned into dust and blew out through the windows. The king, the princess, and the guards looked in awe. The desert eagle turned towards Ahmed and smiled and then disappeared into thin air. Overwhelmed from the situation, the king turned towards Ahmed and said, You are a brave man, Ahmed. I announce that from today, you are the prime minister of the kingdom. Ahmed was ecstatic and bowed down in front of the king. Thank you, your majesty. And so, Ahmed became the prime minister of the kingdom. Food was no longer scarce, and Ahmed and his father lived very happily. Princess Roxana was delighted, for she secretly was fond of Ahmed, and the thought of him to never have to leave the palace made her happier. The two soon started to spend a lot of time together and fell in love with each other. When Princess Roxana told her feelings to her father, he was very happy. Well, I am very fond of Ahmed, and I am very happy to welcome him into the family. But that is if he wants to marry you too. Ahmed was called to the courtroom. Ahmed, my daughter says that she is in love with you and wants to spend the rest of her life with you. What are your thoughts? Your Majesty, I am in love with her too. Very well. Then let me speak with your father and plan the wedding. <laughs> let the festivities begin. A grand wedding was held. Ahmed and Princess Roxana were married. The king was happy and so was Ahmed's father. Ahmed's journey taught us that no matter who you are and what you do, kindness is a gift everyone can afford to give. <laughs>